let's make a sunflower bag. Today we are seaming together our sunflower bag. The pattern will be down below. And if you've seen our other tutorial, I taught you how to make a sunflower square. And I also have a video on how to make the spiral handles. You can make them long or short. We've got long ones on this bag here. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to put together all of your uh, squares and seam it. So we have a very specific schematic. I'm going to show you all of that. So it's very hands-on and and you'll just need your contrasting yarn, your hook, and your 13 squares. And then in the end, I will show you how to also stitch on your handles. So you're not going to want to miss a stitch of this video. Be sure and click down below and get your tutorials for the sunflower square or the pattern for that. And then also the pattern for the bag. Let's dive right in. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. Remember on Good Knit Kisses, we also have right and left-handed tutorials, so be sure and click down in the video description below for the correct one that you need. I'm going to assume at this point you've already made your squares, or maybe you're just curious about what happens on this bag and setup before you even make them. So I'm gonna do the overview in the beginning, and then when we actually start working it, you'll understand where I was pointing to and what actually becomes of your um, pattern. All right, so be sure and download your pattern because you're going to want all these schematics that we're gonna include, their drawings of how to lay this out so that you can pin it together with all of your stitch markers. You're gonna need about 15, and that's to um, pin together all of the corners and I'll show you that in a moment and then you need one extra one uh, to mark the um, front of your work versus the back of the work and we'll get into that later on and then there will be right and left-handed schematics um, if you um, are crocheting with your right or your left hand or you enjoy um, going from that direction so um, we kept you all in mind and all of those will be in the pattern whether you download it from Ravelry and Etsy ad free or if you want to get it for free on our blog and just keep scrolling and find those things. It will have ads on it, but if you want to ad free again, you support Good Knit Kisses by purchasing it on those Ravelry and Etsy stores. And I believe we're going to have them on Spring, which you can stay on the YouTube platform and get them. Um, so that might be available later on. All right, so let's dive right in and start working on this. I'm just going to indicate to you where we're going to start our seam and the sequence of it. And then I'm actually going to physically show you with this stack here and we'll lay it out and pin them together. So once we lay it out and we pin it together and get it in this shape, you're going to be going down here and you're going to be working in this corner and then going along the seam to combine this top or front um, square and then this back square here and then it comes along this edge and you're turning what I'm calling an outside corner okay so it doesn't pucker we've got a couple of extra stitches in here and then we have our same seam uh, or stitching that we did here okay and then we come along we pick up some more uh, squares and we come along and do this end uh, that these two squares here and then go along here so when you're crocheting you're coming from this direction and then when we get to the top here, we actually just flip it over and continue all the way down to the bottom. And basically it joins where you had started, all right? So now that you flipped it, over here hasn't been done because we're on the opposite side. So we start on this corner again, work our way down and we're picking up the other edge. And then we work our way up and do this seam. And then we, we come across where we had just done it. So we have a, a little bit different way to handle when it crosses over and we'll address that. And then we come here and we pick up some more. We're gonna come and go um, straight across cause there's no seam here at this point and then flip it again. So when you flip it, you come down and then you finish it. And so what you're left with is these little crisscrosses here on the front and just like that on the, um, on the back. And then you have these edges done and then we will begin and come up to the top and come work our way down here, jumping over the seam, flipping it. And then we come up and we cross over a seam and come up to the top. And instead of starting a new strand, you actually just turn the corner and we're gonna finish it and come all the way down here and flip it. And then you're done, so that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, show you how to lay out your squares and go ahead and um, uh, put them all together with stitch markers. 
So first we're going to lay out all of our squares and connect them. Here we have our squares, I've got my stack, we've already um, woven in all of our tails, so you'll want that um, for this point here. And make sure they're all facing right side up. Okay, so if you like this side up, which is technically the way that you did it, everything kind of leans over in this direction um, and make them all face that way. You can see that I've done that here. They're all facing the correct way or right way. Um, or if you like it flipped this way, that's fine too. Okay, but make sure you're consistent. So you're going to start by laying all of these out in this specific way. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to back my camera up so you can see it. All right, so you have everything with the right side facing up. It's all tilted this way. You're going to take your whole stack and flip it, turn upside down, and you're going to lay it out in this um, layout here. So um, what I've done is I've already I've already got them on here. So they're all kind of crowded on here because this is far away as I can get on my screen. Um, but this is how you're going to lay it out. We have um, our numbers schematic. So if you follow my numbers, um, we have um, one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, or if it's easier for you to think, they're all on a diagonal and there's three rows with four across. We have one, two, three, four, and then you shift the next four, one, two, three, four, shift, uh, come back here. We got one, two, three, four, and then we have this last one here. So now you're going to take all of your stitch markers this is my sample from the other video. Um, take all your stitch markers, make sure they're nice and big or you can have scrap yarn and you're going to connect all of these corners. Now we have in our schematic, you're going to see a little dot there. So if you look at our drawing, you can see all these little dots. That's where you're going to have your stitch marker. So just go over here and drop it in at every one of these points. Make sure you have them all. And then um, go ahead and hook them on there. So the way that you um, put them uh, on there, I'll do that after I get these in place. Let's see, yeah, there it is. So let's, let's put this one on together. So I'm just going to go through this little chain here. We've got those two chains in that corner and it's easy to just go into the, that chain space. I'm gonna go through one, two, three squares and then our fourth square and that's the most that you'll connect at any point so these have four all in here and then the rest of them are three squares so go ahead and connect those and then we will um, when we come back I'll show you how to fold it up now that all of our corners are attached we're going to pick up squares one through five which are these over here and fold along the diagonal of square number six right here and lay them on the remaining square. So pick these up and fold them on top. All right, so number six is folded. And then we also want to fold the last squares. This is 11 and 13. And then we're going to attach the corners to the others and join. So you will have, um, those are already attached over there, but this one you're gonna need to attach right here. So you just simply um, open that up and reattach all four of these corners. All right. And then you're gonna um, also attach here because now we have these parts connected. And then you'll do it here and here and here. So you have one, two, three, four, five that need to be joined up. Uh, pause your video and I will see you when you've got that and we'll be ready to start seaming. All right, I've got everything pinned together and I wanna show you, I did put a stitch marker here on the front of my work. So just pick a side, it doesn't matter, and put a stitch marker there and that's now gonna be the front. Just leave it up to the front and let's go refer to our written pattern. Now, when you're on this part two for seaming and edging, you're gonna notice at the beginning before this um, schematic that we were on, okay? So slightly before, there's an area he, here that says um, seam methods and seam ABC. You're gonna wanna refer to that if you forget what I said that's on the video. I'm gonna demonstrate it, but I just want you to know it's written down here um, to find it. Okay, so depending upon where we're jumping over, like I mentioned earlier, it's just gonna be called an A, B, or C. So if you need to refer to that in the pattern, go here. Now on the schematics here, 
and you come all the way over here, you're going to see either you're going to pick your right handed or your left handed and you're going to see um, the steps that we um, that we work. So I talked about this earlier. Seam one steps. We're going to um, start with our very first um, uh, our very first square over here and we're going to with our contrast B which is our second color um, you can use the same color I suggest a, a something contrasting um, we're gonna begin on the lower right now on the left handed you're actually gonna be the opposite you're gonna be starting on the lower left and you'll see that when I flip the camera and we start actually working this um, but you're gonna be working right here for right and it'll be over here for the lefties okay so we're gonna be working along this line and then coming up and then you flip it and then you see it comes on this diagonal here so if you're a lefty let's look at this seam two um, or seam one I'm sorry for lefties you're gonna see it start over here see that and you're gonna go here and here and then flip over and you're gonna come down here okay so just to make it easy let's look at just the right-handed ones and you're just gonna see what I mean about the A B C kind of thing so this very first start part that we're starting we're going to go in this direction for the first scene that we do and it's going to be an a we're going to go up here and we're going to make um we're going to for the second one it's a b and then the the third one is a b and you just see the sequence of we're here first then here then here and then here and so on okay so that's how that's going to handle and we talk about it up here whether that we're on the front or on the back so you can refer to the written instructions if you get a bit confused every time we turn you're going to see there's a chain too and you're going to turn and um, if you're supposed to cut the yarn be sure and look at that so i just want to give you a bit of an overview of the written part but now let's just go into it visually because that's why we're here for this video so you can actually see See it visually done. With contrast B we're going to begin right here along this diagonal edge on the front of the back and we're going to work a seam A being sure to crochet through both of the front and the back squares. So I'm going to take my stitch marker off here. Uh, these two squares you can leave it on this uh, corner here so you don't miss it later and we're just going to ignore this corner for now and just go along this edge down to here okay. Now we're gonna start with our basic seam, which is seam A. So we're gonna single crochet in the first two corners, but first we need to join. So go ahead and make your slip knot. All right, and I'm gonna go through this chain two space on the back, chain two space on the front, and pull that through. Get that tail out of the way. Go ahead and pull that through yarn over and join. That's just how I'm joining here. There's a couple ways you can join, just join however you like. Uh, now we're going to go through these first, and you can feel free to pick this up because they're all connected. Um, you're gonna go through this uh, corner here. We have two single crochets. We have one, two. So I'm gonna go through this first single crochet and go through, this is the back square, and then we have the front square. So here's that sec uh, first single crochet and yarn over and pull through that one on the front, the one on the back, and pull up, because you wanna be even along this line, and we're going to um, yarn over and pull through to single crochet. And now we're gonna go through the next one. So we're gonna single crochet through this one on the back and the one on the front, yarn over and pull that all the way through both stitches, yarn over and pull through to single crochet. So now we have two single crochets in the uh, first corner and chain one okay and now we want to half double crochet in the vine so yarn over and then this is that vine so we're going to go through both of them it's really easy just to go through both together go through pull up a loop and you want to pull it up nice and high because you're going to go along that edge yarn over and pull through all three loops for the half double crochet and you can see it stitched down below it's really nice chain one all right and now we want to single crochet in the next single crochet between the vines so we have a single crochet here and you're just kind of making it you're just kind of making up there's one here but you know you see how you have the single crochet here just kind of follow this line right here so we didn't technically single crochet in this one before but there is one that just kind of falls along. So um, you're gonna go through there, but you wanna go through both of them. So go through that single crochet and this single crochet, pull up a loop and pull through all of it, yarn over 
and pull through to single crochet. Then we chain one. And now we're gonna repeat going uh, in that next vine, yarn over, go through both vines, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three for half double crochet in that vine and chain one. Go into the next single crochets, the first one there, the one on the front side, pull through and single crochet, chain one. And we have another vine. Uh, so we're gonna go through that one, yarn over, go through both, pull up, yarn over, half double crochet, chain one, go in that next single crochet, go through both, make sure you're lining up, single crochet, chain one, you should have one more vine, yarn over, half double crochet through there, pull through all of those, uh, single crochet, I'm sorry, <laughs> let me go back, going to chain one, okay, and um, after this last vine and you've done one single crochet, um, you're going to uh, two single crochets in the next two single crochets. You're going to skip that, um, picking that thing up in between vines, and you're just going to go into this first single crochet uh, through both of these. Uh, let's see, make sure I've got my corner here. It might be easier to take your stitch marker out. All right. So here is this corner here, and that's that first single crochet in that corner. So we're gonna pull through and single crochet once, and then now we do it twice by going through the next one. And this will be right before that chain space. Pull through. And we've completed that first seam. Okay, that's a seam A, all right? And then we're gonna slip to join. So we want to uh, join here. We have uh, one, two, uh, to join like that. All right, we've finished the step one and we've um, slipped to join. We need to now move on to number two. And before we move on, because we're on a corner, we're going to chain two. So we start by chaining two and then we work our seam B and we're only gonna be working with the front of these uh, two squares. So this is, looks like a triangle here, but we're only working with the front squares here. So seam B, you're going to be picking up um, more um, corners. So we slip to the existing corner, which I've already got, and we're gonna pick up the new corners. So picking up the new corners, I can take this stitch marker off. We don't need that anymore. We're gonna go into that chain space and then this one, we've got the chain space here. Let's see. I only want to go into this one. So I have this chain space here. And then I'm going to, oops, make sure my yarn is to the back. Go into uh, this chain space here, this corner one. Go into this chain space here and pull through and slip to join, all right? And then now we are ready to begin the same sequence. So um, our, all of our corners are connected. We're going to uh, single crochet in this first stitch here and then pick up the first single crochet in that corner, which is this one. Pull through both, single crochet, and then go in the next one, single crochet through that next part of the corner, go through the next single crochet in um, this square back here. They're all in the front, it's this one. Pull through, single crochet, and now we chain one, and we're going to half double crochet along these vines. So it's the same type of seam, it's just, if you call it B, it's because we're picking up new, um, new squares. That's really the main thing, we're picking up the new squares. So we're gonna half double crochet in this first vine, be sure to pull all the way up, so we go along that edge. Whoop, let me do that again. Yarn over, go through both vines, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops, and chain one single crochet in the top here through both, okay, between the vines, 
chain one, half double crochet into the next vine, pull up a loop, elongate that, and half double crochet, chain one. So you continue with the same seam all the way uh, down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one, and then you'll be able to do most of these seams because um, I don't want this video to be super long. I want you to be able to get the understanding of how to actually make these um, by working a few together. All right, pulling through, single crochet, chain one, go into the vine, yarn over, make a half double crochet, chain one, single crochet between the vines, chain one, half double crochet, chain one, and yeah. So now that we're in, we've done the last one, I've done a half double crochet, chain one. Now we need to go into the last two single crochets of that square. So we're gonna go here, this is in the corner. And this is when it gets tight for me. I just go ahead and undo the entire corner. Start taking those off. As the rest of the bag is put together, so you don't have to worry about dropping it or losing it. Okay, so I've gone through that first single crochet. I'm still on this square. I'm ignoring those. And I want to make sure that I'm going into that very first single crochet. I have one more to go through. Pull through both of those single crochets, finish that single crochet, go into the next one, pull through both, there we go, single crochet, and then we're going to slip to join, I'm just slipping into the corners, and that's how I complete it, and it looks nice and joined, and then this is where we um, make another B. So we finished two, and we're going on a three, and it's called a B because we're joining more of these corners. So what I do is I'm already connected. I'm just kind of el eliminating this one from my mind, and because I'm down on this first part, I'm just calling it the this is connecting to these two. So I'm concentrating that these are my next two. I'm gonna make sure and put my yarn to the back of um, this, uh, this square here. And I'm gonna go through the chain two space of this front square here and this front square here. Go through, pull through all the way and slip to join, okay? And then now we're ready to begin our sequence. We're going to go through our um, corner stitch, single crochet, whoops, I'm sorry, missed this one. All right, sorry, after I join, let's start over. <laughs> I'm going to keep that in there so you can see what I do. Okay, so now I can ignore this corner already because everything's already joined. And I actually am going to be picking this up again when I come this direction. So don't worry if this feels a little loosey-goosey or something. So now we're just going to look in this corner here. So single crochet through this one and this one. Pull through. Single crochet once. And now the second one pull through all to single crochet. And now we're gonna chain one, yarn over, go through both of those vines, half double crochet, chain one. And then we're gonna go into that single crochet, pull through, single crochet, chain one, yarn over, go into that uh, vine space, half double crochet, chain one. If I'm going too fast or too slow, be sure and check the playback speed on YouTube uh, to change it to, um, you know, speed it up or slow it down. Uh, so after our chain one, we're gonna go into that um, single crochet between the vines and single crochet, chain one, half double crochet into the vines chain one into the single crochet and single crochet chain one last set of vines yarn over half double crochet chain one 
chain one. And then now we're back to a corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and unhook, unpin all this stitch marker or untie your little pieces of scrap yarn. Just gonna let that fall. And now we're still working on these two squares. So I've just freed this up because it's just a little bulky for us. All right, so now we want to go into those uh, last two single crochets of this corner. And single crochet once and single crochet twice. Okay, slip to join again in that corner to corner here. This, these two, oh, I shouldn't say corner to corner, but you know what I mean? Like chain two, chain two space on this corner and this one and slip to join. And then just ignore uh, this one back here, the square. You're just really paying attention to this loop here. Okay, now we're gonna work, now that we're on, we've done um, one, two, three. Now we're on to um, the fourth one and we're still on the front side. Uh, so we're going to go into the next chain two space uh, on the front and then this one. Oops, you know what I did here. So my yarn is um, not behind them. So make sure and do that before you start. You want to put it back here, then go into those chain spaces and yarn over and pull through to join. And that's what makes a B. And then we begin our sequence and we're repeating seam A for this. So again, we've got our uh, single crochet in that first stitch. Oops. Make sure to go through both parts of the stitch. And then the next one. Chain one. And then we're going to half double crochet into that line and I think you've got it. So um, keep going and I'll meet you at the end of this seam here and show you how to turn that corner again. All right, so we've done one, two, three, four, we've ended and now we're ready to uh, turn our bag, but we need to make a chain two first and that is in the pattern after the four, you make your um, seam B and then you're going to chain two, one, two, and then turn your bag over to continue on to the back. So we're not gonna see a stitch marker up here in the middle like we had on the front. And we're going to um, continue with all seam Bs on the back here. So we're gonna be picking up and then making a seam A, picking up, making a seam A. So that's really what the B is. So um, in order to begin, you want to go into that very first corner and then the next corner in that chain space, pull through and slip to join and now you can bring, uh, begin your seam B. So go ahead and do that technique, single crochet in those two um, corner stitches and begin your sequence for a seam A there, okay? All right, so um, pause your video and I will meet you at the end of this um, particular sequence, okay? Uh, oops. So I will meet you at the end here and we'll complete this and begin our um, uh, next seam, the ste seam two. All right, we'll see you there. All right, so I'm on um, the seventh one and we're finishing up and you can see where I had this outside corner before. Um, I've got two more stitches. Make sure to put that yarn at the back. We're gonna go into the next single crochet and the front of both of those. Single crochet once and go in the next one and single crochet again here. And then we want to finish it off by slipping to join. So I just go right into uh, this same color here and pull up a loop and then just slip it there. So all the color just joins up together. Okay, so just pull through and cut your tail, cut your yarn and pull that out and you can just leave that tail in for now and we'll address it later on. And now you're ready to move on to seam two. All right, so your work should like look like this and I am on the back, you don't see that stitch marker here. And seam two is almost identical as seam one. Um, we are going to be jumping over a couple of these seams as we go on this side, but it begins the same exact way as seam one. So you're gonna start right here and you're gonna work an A 
and then you're going to turn, making that chain two, and then make the seam B. And then when you get to this place, I want you to come back to the video. So I'm gonna do these off camera and so will you. So you're gonna pause your video here in a second and meet me here at this point. I'll show you how to jump over this point and then we'll have one more jump point um, on the reverse side. So you should be on the back. We're gonna start in the same place that you did before. Go ahead and do that, pause your video and I will meet you here. Ah, don't forget, go back and look at seam one to help yourself start here if you forgot. All right, so we've done um, 1A and then 2B, and now we're on 3C because we're jumping over the seam. Now, when we come to the end here, we don't really actually have to join anything, but all we need to do is start by chaining one, and that's going to jump over this seam visually, and then we can connect our corners here so um, I'm just gonna go right into this very first corner of this stitch, uh, this square that I need to go into, and then this one. So we're just slipping together our corners. Oh gosh, I do that every time. Make sure your yarn's at the back and go into those uh, chain spaces, pull up a loop, and then you join. And then now you're going to work your, um, your seaming um, at A, just as you've done. So you're gonna go into that very first uh, stitch right there and here and make your single crochet and then your next one. So it's just the same. So the only thing you're doing is you're just uh, making sure that you chain before you start that sequence and then join. So it looks like it jumps right over at that intersection and continue on. So in this one, you're gonna continue on until you get, um, you flip it over and uh, you are at um, seam C, with the next seam C, which is um, the very last stitch. So um, this is going to be, so 1A, 2B, 3C, and then we um, do a B again for four. You're gonna flip it over and it's continue. All right, and then I'll show you it one more time here, and then we'll finish that out. So um, this one here for seven is going to be a C as well, and then you'll finish it how we did before. All right, pause your video, I will see you there. All right, we're down at number seven, and I've just finished the sequence, and um, you might see that it looks um, a little uh, disconnected here, like this one's just not as tight and like lining straight up. If you feel like you need to join first, which is how I have the instructions written, then you can. I'm just gonna go join to like one corner real quick before I do that chain one. So I'm just gonna go into this corner here and this one one more time and join again. And then I'll do my single crochet one, which will jump over this corner. And then now after I go over that corner, I'm gonna go into it here and then into um, this square. So we're going into this square and this square, into the corner, pulling through and slipping. And that should get everything lining up and you have a nice little X here and it jumps over very nicely. So uh, now you can continue on um, with your uh, stitching pattern, single crochet, in those next two single crochets in the corner and chain one and then go into the vines and in between the vines just as you've done. So go ahead and pause your video. Um, you know how to finish that off at the end here. You just uh, cut your yarn and then I will meet you back up for the next seam. We'll see you in a moment. All right, your work should look like this on the front and on the back. It'll have that X shape and we're ready to begin our seam three. So at the seam three, you're gonna start at the very top, whether you're right or left-handed, and you're gonna be going in this direction here. So you can refer to the seaming diagram for right-handed and left-handed. And uh, this one is going to be 1A. And then you're gonna jump to a C because we're gonna cross over this seam right here. So um, it's the same way as before. I don't think I need to show you all of that again because it's just gonna make the video really, really long. So if you want to um, go ahead and, um, and start this one, I will help you start it. Make your slip knot and connect. All right, so uh, this seam right here, we're going to um, undo this stitch marker. And we only need to pick up these two uh, right here because on our way back uh, on seam four we'll actually pick this one up so just make sure you're only working with the front of these um, uh, these squares here so I'm going to go into that corner and get my slip knot 
tighten it up. We're going to pull it through and yarn over and join. And then begin your sequence with the um, single crochet and going all the way along. Make sure to turn your corner with the chain two. Um, when you're crossing over seams, you're going to chain one. And um, this is going to flip over and it's going to work. It's going to look like it's coming up this direction when you end it. So um, pause your video and I'll meet you back um, for uh, this side here. So the ones on the other, when I flip this over, you'll finish with a C and I'm going to help you um, finish this part here. You're not going to cut it. So we'll meet right here. Pause your video and I'll see you soon. You know, I've decided to go ahead and throw this in before we get down to this end. Um, after you turn the corner here, this is actually the part where you begin your very first seam. And this tail is here, it's an opportunity for you to just go ahead and tuck it on the inside. Okay, so if you just tuck it in before you, after I've done the chain two, tuck that in and go ahead and join your corners here. And uh, it's just a nice way to get that ready to go and you've got that trapped in. Um, and when we weave our tails in later on, um, I'm gonna have you pull in all the tails to the inside um, because it's just gonna be a lot easier to hide them. So anyway, go ahead and continue this on. Uh, pause your video, I will meet you at the end of the seam here. Do not cut your yarn, we'll see you there. So I've done uh, the seam for 3B and 4C. I've come to the end and I have attached my corners here to join. And then um, we want to go ahead and chain two, one, two. And I've already taken this stitch marker off on this, uh, this square here, but you may have accidentally taken the stitch marker off on the back here. Technically that is the front side. And so you might want to put that back on there so you don't, these aren't flipping around, but make sure that you still have an opening that looks like this with two squares, the top and two squares, the top over here. So um, you have one side and then the next side. And um, this is where we're going to be joining next. So after we've chained two, we're going to turn the corner and we're actually going to go this way to start seam four. So we're not cutting the yarn. We're going to continue on to seam four by just turning it. So uh, let's jump there. All right. So now this is the beginning of seam four and you can look at that diagram and this is going to be an A, a seam A here. And then we're going to work a C. So one is A, then two C, and then we'll flip it on the back and then you'll finish with a B and a C on the other side. All right. Go ahead and do that. Pause your video. I'll meet you at the end. All right, I'm coming to the end of um, number four, and it was a C, you know, we had jumped over here, and uh, this is the very beginning. I just took my stitch marker out, and I now just need to join my, um, my two squares here. So go ahead and go through that corner, and oops, go through the next corner, and pull through and slip to join. Now it doesn't look as neat here. You can go ahead and um, make sure that that other tail is pulled to the inside. And then I would just go through uh, that last corner again and pull through and slip to join to that corner to really finish it off, okay? And then um, go ahead and pull through and cut your tail. All right, and so now all you need to do is take your tails and pull them to the inside. So we have these two tails, and then as you turned those corners there, if you tuck them in, there was two opportunities to tuck those in, you'll have those, and then you'll have these two tails at the um, very bottom of your bag. So go ahead and you can um, turn your bag inside out like this, and then find those corners or find those uh, tails and weave them in. So. Uh, let's just do one of them here to show you how I do it. I'm just going to take my tapestry needle and bring it into the back. And if you need to tie this in a knot, um, let's see. I can't even do that. <laughs> okay, I got it. I'm just going to tie this in a knot here. Boop, just to get it a little more snug here. And then thread your tapestry needle. And then I'm just going to go through my contrast B stitches like that and go through some more and weave it in. I might even go back on here and pull through a loop to snug it in and then go through a couple more places. So we just want to really just hide this in the back of these stitches and you can go through the opposite color 
as well to really get it to stay snugly in there. Okay, so you just kind of play with what it looks like on yours, but make sure these are nice and um, buried in, all your tails are buried in. Um, go ahead and do those, pause your video, come back and flip this inside out and I'll show you what to do next. Step three is the edging, and this is the crab stitch. The crab stitch is like a backward single crochet. Now, forgive me, sometimes I'll say single crochet, and I mean crab. <laughs> but basically, um, if you know it's single crochet, it actually starts and you work just like you normally crochet, but on crab stitch, you actually are working like a single crochet, but backwards. So we're actually gonna begin over here at this uh, side join area. So we're gonna begin on this side. We're gonna work all the way along this top edge of just the front uh, square, come down to this little valley in the front, go up again and then down, and then we will flip it over to the back and we'll continue along doing the same thing and then end here. So you'll actually end up where you started and you'll have a tail or two tails here at your beginning point that you end up weaving in later on. So the crab stitch, I actually have a video on how to do that. So you're gonna go click down on that video down below and I'm not gonna show it to you on here cause you know how to join yarn already, but you're going to basically um, crab stitch uh, twice in this little corner area and then start that little vine sequence. So you're going to um, single crochet in the next, or crab stitch in the next two uh, stitches, skip one and crab stitch. So you'll have three. So let's look at this. So you have your um, side join and you have two crab stitches and then you have three over a vine and then you have three over a vine, three over a vine, three over a vine. So you have four of those and then you have your corner. So the sequence as it's written, we have two here then we have two, skip one, and then one. These are crab stitches. Then we have two crab stitches, skip one, and then a single crab stitch, two crab stitches, skip, and a crab stitch, two crabs, skip, and then a crab stitch. And then we have finish with two crab stitches. And then your sequence again uh, through your next row is two crabs. And then you have these three over these vines, you come all the way down, and when you finish here in this sort of valley, valley, you're gonna have two crab stitches here, and then you begin all over again. So it's all written out, every single crab stitch that you will actually make, but I'm trying to simplify it on here. So for the pattern, um, be sure and visit that blog for that. And um, for the slower tutorial on actually making the crab stitch, go click on the videos for that. So let's move on to the handles. All right, so we have our handles, and these are the spiral handles. You wanna make two of them for your bag. Now, this is really a personal choice of how long you want these handles. Just make sure that they are the same length, and be sure and check out our video tutorial on how to make them and how to measure for the length and for your stretch. Now, I do have an extra tip that I didn't say in that video if you wanna to go to it, but here is my sample that I had made. Now, if you decide, I really don't want this to stretch at all, a little hack that you can do is take an extra piece of yarn. Um, you can even do two to three strands, and this is very durable because it is the mercerized cotton, but you could um, feed it in with your tapestry needle and work that in or have it um, laying there or coming on the inside as you're stitching it together and let, let it hang over as you're um, creating it. So like, let's see, I've already started with having extra strands at the beginning here and I could continue crocheting my handle here, this spiral. Be sure and check out that video for that, but let this extra strand um, be sitting here. So what would happen is you would um, have enough for tails on the either side, but you would have um, marked maybe where uh, the length that you want this handle. So say you want the handle to have a lot of strength and not actually stretch, you can do that. Whereas these are going to stretch. I hope that makes sense. It's not too much information, but um, you do have that little choice. That's kind of cute. Um, so whether you have a short handle or a long one, go ahead and make them, make them the same length and have your long tail. I'm going to show you how to sew them onto your bag. All right, so you've made your handles. I've gone ahead and attached this one back here so you can see what that looks like attached. And then I'm going to show you how to attach this handle up front. Um, this is what is happening here. So on the, um, the outside part of it, you can see that um, the end of the handle is attached really uh, down here in this corner. 
and then we've actually reinforced it and um, added stitches uh, to the back of the crab stitch. Um, I recommend doing a whip stitch to go around the end of your handle all the way around the stitches in the corner and then you come back and then go into the back of the crab. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So go ahead and thread your tapestry needle and if you didn't have long enough strands that's okay you could go ahead and tie one on here you want to need about you need about 12 to 18 inches um, here so you can just tie it on make a knot the first thing i would do is um, just go ahead and start by attaching it to the corner here this doesn't have to be perfect but um, you kind of want to make sure to line it up with this top outside corner just pull through that hole there in the middle and then you can um, go up through um, uh, around underneath where this crab stitch is and kind of come up to the top okay and pull through and I'm just gonna do a couple just to join up this middle part really really well okay now I'm just gonna um, make three or, or four whip stitches all around these um, uh, these four single crochets so I'm gonna come up through the middle and come through this first single crochet and to the uh, handle back here and just go through a couple of stitches on the very edge, All right? And then come through the uh, middle again, that corner, come up through the next single crochet and go through the next set of stitches. Just make sure to go through both sides of that handle and come back through the middle. You're just making a whip stitch that goes around go through kind of the third area. If you can't tell, just sort of eyeball it. I'm gonna come through here, go through both sides of that handle, pull through, come around, and you're gonna do the fourth one. Come through here and go around these, the back here, going through a few stitches. All right, so now that part's secure, but you see how this kind of lops over? It's not so pretty, it's not looking like this quite yet. I know it, it does lop a little bit, but it actually is um, hanging down a lot more. Okay, so now that we've done that, if you have a lot of strands, you could actually whip through that a couple more times and then approach this from the other side, but that's okay. Um, uh, let's see if I can do this right-handed. Um, so, you know, since I have enough, I'm just gonna say I'm gonna go through these again, just arbitrarily. It doesn't have to be four. I like to approach it from the side uh, of where my hand generally that I'm handed. I'm right-handed and of course if you're left you're seeing me look like I'm using my left. Okay. All right now that I'm back here so I'm going to come up through the top again and um, go through just the top of this crab stitch here and between the crab stitch and the handle and then just grab a couple of stitches from the handle and then um, go along and you could um, go through the back of these, the crab stitch here, all right? Go through the next couple of stitches and then go through the back of this crab stitch here. And you can do it in a number of ways, but all I'm doing is just basically getting uh, two lines of uh, reinforcement. Imagine down here is where some stitches are and then up here is where some stitches are. So we have kind of parallel stitching here for strength. And we're just using the back of the stitches so uh, this color, the main color, doesn't show through our contrast color. So now that I've got it attached, I'm gonna come through up through the middle again. I'm gonna find a spot that I can um, basically tie off and make a knot, tighten it up, and then I can weave it in here or you can actually weave your tail and go straight up through this tube here and pull it out and cut your yarn. And then when you pull on the tube, it just hides it. So then you just repeat on all four of the other corners to finish your handles. 
Well, I hope you have enjoyed making your bag. And if you would like to line it, we actually will have a video coming up uh, on making a lining for your bag. You don't actually need it, um, but if you want to add one, um, you can, and it will have like a nice little contrast to it. You could use a color, you could use a contrast um, B sort of color, um, you know, pop it with a blue, whatever you like to do. But I hope you've enjoyed making your sunflower bag just as much as I've, as I've enjoyed making mine. All right, have a good day and happy crochet. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.